Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Secretary Salazar, for being here today. Um, the events in the Middle East magnify the need for American energy independence, and we have heard uh, already this morning about the rising gas and fuel prices and the effect on the American economy. Uh, America is blessed with abundant resources. I have traveled all over the country. I have seen and visited national parks, wilderness areas, and enjoy the outdoors. But the abundant resources I want to talk about this morning include oil and natural gas resources and uh, what we have on federal lands. We have seen the policies of this administration continue to thwart the efforts for more domestic production at a time when we need it the most. Through policies such as the de facto moratorium on deep water drilling permits being issued in the post Deepwater Horizon era, as well as limitations on hydraulic fracturing or, or fracking as it is known. The new budget proposal proposes cutting uh, or ending nearly $1 billion in existing programs such as those to fight wildland fires and economic development loans for Native Americans, shifting these funds to areas like increased land acquisitions and the controversial national ocean policy as well as climate change uh, adaption. There is $14 million in this proposal uh, for new energy frontier initiative which mandates increasing capacity for renewable energy production on interior managed lands. In addition, the budget seeks $73 million for approval of wind, geothermal and solar projects on public lands, a $14 million increase over last year. Um, American energy independence is a, is a national security issue. We have the resources here in this country. A lot of the Federal land has been taken off the table. Um, what I would like to hear from you this morning is uh, the agency's opinion on increasing production of energy sources on Federal land, uh, the de facto moratorium on offshore drilling permits and what's being done. I, I appreciate that one permit was issued uh, this week and uh, hopefully we will see more of those, but uh, the de facto moratorium on issuing those permits, the expiring oil and natural gas leases that are affected. Uh, by those guys not being able to get out there and go to work. Uh, what are we going to do about uh, those leases? Are there going to be an extension on those uh, because they have been uh, uh, prohibited from going to, to tap that? And then also future lease sales. Um, if you could answer those questions for me. Uh, thank you, Congressman. We uh, have uh, moved forward, as I said in my opening statement, with uh, a robust uh, oil and gas uh, and energy program, both uh, uh, onshore as well as offshore, both uh, conventional as well as uh, renewable. Uh, I'm proud of the record that we have and disagree with uh, the conclusions that you state. Uh, with respect to what we are doing to uh, increase production onshore, as I said, we uh, have issued uh, 5,200 leases in 2010. We expect that uh, there will be an additional 2,000 leases issued uh, this next year. There are 40 million plus acres that have been issued on, and are under lease for oil and gas development on the onshore. With respect to your second question on uh, what you call the uh, de facto moratorium, there is no moratorium. Uh, we are moving forward uh, in uh, a robust way to stand up uh, oil and gas drilling. The policy of the President has been to move forward with the development of oil and gas in the Gulf of Mexico and in, in the deep waters. And with respect to uh, excuse leases... Me, excuse me, let me interrupt you there, but by not issuing permits, uh, for those guys to get back out there and go to work, even after they have met all the safety requirements uh, in the post Deep Horizon era, uh, is a de facto moratorium? Well, they, with, with they had not met, the, you know, David Hayes and uh, Michael Bromwich and I were in Houston on Friday. And uh, what we did was uh, went out there to inspect firsthand uh, what was going on with uh, the oil spill containment mechanisms that are being built by both the Helix and the Marine Well Containment Corporation. As I said uh, during that trip, and as I'll say in front of this committee, I am pleased uh, with uh, the progress that industry is making at, at dealing with uh, the threat of uh, another type of Maconda well blowout. Uh, there is still significant progress to be made, but it's on the basis of the oil spill containment as well as the safety regulations that we put into place for cementing and casing and third party inspection and a whole host of other things that we are now able to move forward with uh, some assurance that we will be able to have safe uh, drilling in uh, the deep oceans of America. In, in the remaining time, could you address future lease sales for me? We uh, are very hopeful and we are pushing hard to be able to meet the requirements so that we can have uh, a lease sale in uh, the Gulf of Mexico yet this year. Uh, 